So hey everybody, as always, welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping in. My name is Rich, I'm the channel host, and I wanna dive right into this. So it's coming up on two months with the Mavic 3 Enterprise. We've been getting to know the platform pretty well. We've been using it to do some orthomosaic modeling, some 3D modeling, and we've been utilizing it to do some waypoint missions as well. Now, when I say Mavic 3 Enterprise, this is the Enterprise solution from DJI, replacing some of our other drones that we used to use for doing mapping and modeling and waypoint missions. I have to say that on the M3E, I don't feel like this is such an Enterprise solution in comparison to my Phantom 4 Pro or my Mavic 2 Pros. There's a lot of things that are lacking on this, and I wanted to show you one of the many things that are lacking, and that's white balance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look over to this screen in a moment, and we're also going to work with the controller. So I'm gonna connect the controller up to the drone, and then we're gonna take a look through our photo settings and our video settings. I'm gonna talk about a couple of things that are kind of glaring omissions, or problems or things that are hidden that maybe I don't know about and you can correct me on after you watch this video down in the comments. So with all that said, we're gonna hop off of this camera. We're gonna go over here on screen. We're gonna take a look at what's going on screen and we're also going to connect this up and take a look directly under the hood and take a look at the drone and see if I'm missing something or if not everything has been fully implemented on this drone. By the way, I don't regret buying it. We are still going to use it for our clients, but I'm finding that I'm having to work around a platform that costs $2,000 more than my other platforms that can achieve the results I'm looking for. All right, everybody. So here we are with the RC Pro. I'm actually connected to the drone. I've got the drone in the office right now. So we're just gonna jump into the camera view and we're gonna take a quick look through here. Um, this is just our pre-flight check. We're not flying this anywhere. This uh, drone is on the ground and, and in the studio here. All right, so there's all of our main settings and I'm just gonna go right into here. And hey, you can see me from the drone. Look at that. Look at all those cables, wow. All right, so what are we doing here? Um, well, put quite simply, we've been using this drone for about two months and we've found some great positives with it, but we've also found some big negatives with it as well. And so this is a glaring one that I wanted to share with you. Um, before we get into the menu here, I will say, how many of you own a digital camera that doesn't have a white balance setting? I mean, this is the basics, everybody. Um, if you look at any camera out there or your iPhone or your Androids or anything, um, you can actually adjust your white balance. So we've got different types of white balance settings on all of our cameras. I got the, um, M50 right here. It has a way to do, um, a way to deal with white balance. My iPhone has deal, a way to deal with the white balance. All of my drones, uh, the ones that are packed up behind me, the original Mavic Pro, the Mavic 2 Pro, the Phantom 4 Pro V2, all of them, I could affect white balance. And that's kind of important. But what I found here is I can't do that on the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Keyword here is Enterprise. This is supposed to, you know, really bring things up. It is good for mapping and modeling. I will say that I can capture things a lot faster. But then when I start comparing other features, it kind of falls short, especially for that extra, let's call it $2,000 additional price tag here. All right, on screen, we are looking at the uh, controller screen right now here. And so we are in photo mode over here on the right-hand side, that little square right there, that's photo mode. And then the next button is to actually hit your shutter. And then we've got our playback. So right now we have ISO of 800, shutter speed at 140th of a second, aperture 2.8, EV zero, um, auto, we're not using the AE lock. We've got this on AFS for autofocus shooting. And we've got our storage mount. We are on full auto right now for our still photos. And I'd like to ask you, looking at that bar there, ISO, shutter, aperture, EV, AE, AFS, storage, auto. Do you see a white balance anywhere here? No, you don't. Let me tap that auto button 
How about if we go into shutter priority mode? Whoa, that got a lot darker in here, didn't it? And I can go in and change that shutter speed. Oh, there we go. All right. Not that I'd be doing this in the field because it's much brighter outside, but we're in the office. So there you go. So shutter priority. Okay. Let's tap that again. We can do aperture priority or we can do manual. Let's go to manual and let's see what we've got here in manual. And nope, ISO shutter aperture MM uh, auto focus. And yeah, nope, we are out of luck there. So let's go ahead and get out of that auto really quick. And right next to the auto button, I'm going to tap this. And so let's take a look here. So our image ratio is a four by three aspect ratio with this drone. And our image format right now is JPEG. We can do raw JPEG or JPEG and raw. So there we go. Um, not too much else there. So let's arrow back here and let's go over to the three dots really quick. And we can create a folder, timestamp, lock the gimbal while shooting, mechanical shutter, de-warping, uh, which is another problem we'll talk about on a different day. Um, we can put a grid up here, reset camera settings, format memory card. Home point updated. All right. Hey, the home point's Check updated. All right, the map, I'm not going to confirm. Okay, so we're going to tap back out of this. So it looks to me in the photo mode, we do not have access to white balance, not not auto white balance or not sunny day or tungsten or anything like that. We have no access to, um, to dealing with our white balance. Now you might say, oh, Rich, just white balance. But looking through some of the DJI forums, this has impacted other drone operators. And we're gonna take a look at that momentarily when we get on screen. But the basic bottom line here is a key feature of even some of the oldest digital cameras out there is white balance. And we don't have access to this in what's supposed to be an enterprise level drone platform. Um, you know, I really wanted this for our construction, um, time lapsing, mapping and modeling, all of that stuff. And it does great on the mapping side. But I think I did not buy the Mavic 3 Enterprise. I bought the Mavic 3 map. That's what we should call it. And we can say, yeah, a lot of the other features just aren't there. While we're here, I'm just going to click on the button here. So from photo to video. So now we are in the video mode of this particular drone. And I do have to say, we've got a couple of options here. We can do uh, 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames a second, or we can do 4K at 30 frames a second. Those are my options. Those are my only options. So in here, we could go in and can we make some adjustments in here for our video? Well, let's see here. On the video, we have an option of MP4 for the output. And then we have these other items, lock gimbal. Um, let's see here. So video caption, we don't want that. Create a folder. Timestamp, lock the gimbal while shooting. We could have a grid up here, LED while shooting. Uh, reset camera settings. No white balance or anything here either, and such a limited set of uh, options. By the way, when we talk about some of the feedback on the forums and stuff, I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. Um, the lack of the white balance says to me this is not really an enterprise level drone. I've seen a lot of people make excuses and say, well, hey, this is a mapping and modeling drone and that's it. When we look at the Phantom 4 Pro, even the Phantom 4 with the RTK setup, you had more access and more ability to manually control some of this. And, you know, while we're using it on our job sites, I'd like it to be able to be more than a one trick pony. The one trick pony being, hey, we can do some really accurate maps here. We can do some really cool models here. All of that, yes, I wanted, but I could do a lot of that with the Mavic Air Pro, or uh, I'm sorry, the Mavic 2 Pro. Um, so this is a little, it's actually, it's not a little disappointing. It's a lot disappointing. We're going to flip over to the screen in just a moment. We're going to look through, because I was making sure that I'm not crazy, and I'm not taking crazy pills here, that I couldn't find white balance anywhere in here, and I absolutely cannot find it. The lack of the white balance control could in fact impact some of your mapping and modeling, believe it or not. And we're going to take a look at some of the forum answers and some of the forum excuses. 
Okay, everybody, so we went from being on the Canon M50 to being on the uh, Mavic 3 Enterprise. Now we're on screen and I'm stuck down on the little bottom corner, but I just wanted to open this up wide for you to let you see. Um, so I was doing some searching uh, just the other day after I'd realized, hey, where is my white balance? And the honest answer is it isn't their Mavic 3 Enterprise owners. Uh, so right away on the DJI forums, why is the white balance of the Mavic 3 Enterprise locked to automatic white balance? It's an absolute deal breaker when it comes to surveying and mapping. The constant changing of white balance results in some very ugly looking ortho mosaics. This person actually provided this as well. So the Mavic 3E with RTK is supposed to be replacing the Phantom 4 RTK, but how can it when it can't produce comparable results? Yeah, that's a pretty straightforward question there. So this individual even included some data sets for what they're doing. And here we go, we've got a uh, DJI Wanda uh, administrator. Sorry for the inconvenience, white balance cannot be, cannot, okay, right here, cannot be manually adjusted in the DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise Series visible light camera as the app has no related parameters and settings menus. Uh, firmware update, software update, anybody heard of those things? Yeah. All right. So what I loved here is here's one of the examples. And, you know, we've been doing some maps and models. Uh, I've been noticing some differences about the white balance, which is why I was looking into this. And yeah, this, I'm not presenting this to a customer. I'm not presenting this to a customer either. So we're going through these so you can see some of the examples because, uh, because of the white balance. And the next person, this makes the M3E totally unacceptable for stated competency. Wow, you know, this has been a little while, but no, this is a, this is a huge problem. So the gentleman who, or uh, the person who put this in, I work in open cut mining um, and use remotely pirated, uh, piloted aircraft for creating geo-referenced orthos, surfaces, colorized texture mesh. Okay, so they've got the Phantom 4K. Bottom line, this is something that's missing, and I'm gonna take it a step further and extrapolate this into some of the stuff we do. We do time-lapse video and time-lapse stills for our clients as well. These, you know, we're not going for, you know, super death 4K cinematic, we're, we're not looking for the, you know, 60 frames a second, whatever but I am having an expectation that I can capture some video of the job sites that I could capture with my other drones. When it comes down to when we're looking at everything in the video settings, the MP4 with 1080 uh, 30 frames a second or 4K 30 frames a second, and that is it. No other selectability, no white balance in there either. That's problematic. I am at a construction site. I really feel like this drone is a one trick pony in a way. And that one trick is mapping and modeling because I've run into some issues with the waypoints and um, you can actually learn more about that. If you pop over to classes.azdrone.net, we're building a series on this, but you know, we've been going through this drone and I'm, I'm finding it falling flat for me in, uh, in some ways. The mapping and modeling is great but I don't understand why they got rid of a lot of the other features that some of their other enterprise drones could deal with previously. So there you have it. I just wanted to talk about white balance, but it goes beyond white balance. There are some serious issues with the Mavic 3 Enterprise. If you're looking to make it, if you're looking to make your construction enterprise drone, um, this is gonna fall short in some areas. So I just wanna let you know and give you fair warning about some of the issues we're coming across.